You know, the thing about that Ford GT that's spinning behind me is how is Ford able to build it without anybody knowing? I was in Detroit at their press conference when they rolled out the new Raptor, the new Shelby, and then they dropped this on us. How do you build a car this iconic in a company that has hundreds of thousands of employees worldwide and nobody knows about it? Well, I'm going to answer that question as well as what inspired the design. And that is coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Mm -hmm. Design manager, exterior. So you're the guy who designed this, or you were part of the team. Yeah, very, yeah. very important, yes. Yeah. Definitely a part of the team that designed it. I had a couple of designers that worked with me on this, as well as uh, our upper management, all of, the, uh, all of our design execs. So my first question is an easy one. How did you sneak it in? I mean, nobody knew it was coming in Detroit. All of a sudden, there um, it was. We, we believed. Yeah. We kept it a secret. We kept it hush-hush. Uh, a uh, small team of uh, very dedicated people in a skunk works type of mm. um, operation. So yeah, we, we were able to suppress the need to talk about it. And be hard with that car. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you can tell that the team was so dedicated and they really got the message that it didn't get out when it didn't, when it shouldn't have, which so is good. So let's talk about the design. I mean, the first thing you notice is that it's longer. It feels like it's been stretched, so you, like you took the previous generation, stretched it, made it more sleek. Was that on purpose? Um, the car is driven heavily by three things. Okay. It's the aerodynamic efficiency of the car, as yeah. well as the, uh, the lightweightness of the car, as well as the uh, packaging of the EcoBoost engine. So the length that you mentioned it is as a result of us optimizing the aero. It needed a teeny bit more length in the back, especially. Um, dimensionally, the car is pretty close to the, uh, to the uh, 2005 car. But we did make the back a little bit longer, and it's just a bit more efficient from an aero perspective. We don't think it hurt the design. I think we embraced it and work, worked with it well. Um, and a, a host of other things happened as a result of the aero as well. So we, uh, we shaped the uh, entire car around what we, what we would consider a, an efficient and well-organized shape within the tunnel. You know, both CFD as well as uh, an actual scale tunnel test. So I guess designers are always known for like having inspiration, right? They have things that they put up on the wall. What was the inspiration for this? Um, the inspiration for this thing was uh, we had a we had a sort of a mental inspiration, mm. which was uh, you know you're taking care of the GT, right? Be sure you do it well. Mm. So there was this overhanging um, desire to make sure that the car is worthy of the name. That's the first thing. The second thing is we stewardship did, of the brand. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. uh, I mean we all believe that we just take we're taking care of it now. We're just the caretakers of it in this generation. The brand, the, the icon, that'll, that'll live beyond our you know, careers as designers. And we just wanted to leave something that's uh, worthwhile so that it's looked upon with the same set of eyes as the other two are. And it's a pretty tall set of shoes to fill. Yeah, how about it? Now, one of the obviously kind of hallmarks of the car this generation are those flying buttresses, you know, that, yep. that air intake. Is that functional? Absolutely. The really? flying buttresses are not just uh, uh, something that visually ties a design together because the, um, the line on the flying buttress is actually a pretty traditional GT line. It starts at the windshield header. As it makes its way around the, uh, the side glass, it turns into the, the, the buttress and then eventually it, it allows for uh, defining the side scoops on the car. Mechanically, it actually houses the, uh, the uh, compressor discharge air, the, uh, charge, the cooled charge air really? out of the intercoolers. Yeah, so it's the shortest so path to the intake in manifold. Yes, there is. That's so it's cool. It's the shortest path to the intake manifold, and that's what we did. And therefore, if you look at it, it's not just pretty. It's, uh, it's definitely a feature that's been aerodynamically designed as well, and it's got a mechanical uh, story behind it also. Now, in this generation, you're using all sorts of lightweight materials. Did that affect the shape and the design of the car as well? Absolutely. It certainly did. The car is carbon fiber throughout. It's got a carbon tub, carbon bodywork, and uh, that allowed us for uh, some, some very interesting opportunities. You could bend and shape carbon fiber in, uh, in a lot more forgiving ways than, than standard stamped parts. So if you take a look at some of the sculpture and the, uh, and the, and the sections on the car, some of that stuff is only possible because we're using uh, carbon fiber. So personally, what's your favorite part of the design? The cohesiveness of it. Mm. That, uh, that it came together as a bunch of ideas and it managed to look like a GT, but it delivered on, the, uh, on, on, on performing aerodynamically and um, it seems to be pretty easy to look at. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs>
because you know it's going to go up on a lot of walls, right? <laughs> we're, we, we, we definitely that was a part of uh, that was a part of the inspiration of how to how to work on this car. We realized that it's going to be shaping, hopefully, inspiring a bunch of kids and adults alike. In, uh, in, in understanding the passion that is behind this product and the passion that's ultimately behind Ford. And the one you introduced um, in Detroit was kind of that Ford blue, and now here you brought, I guess, is it a silver color? Is that what you call it? This is liquid silver. We're liquid calling silver, it liquid yeah. silver. It's got a very velvety feel to it, so it, it reacts differently to light, yeah, it's and different. it's going to sing in, the, uh, uh, in, in natural light outside. So I was talking to uh, the lead designer for Kia, Peter Schreier, right? Yeah. And he said, it, it's, I asked him, what's your favorite car at the show? And he said, it's hard to tell until you actually see it on the street, right? Kind of, kind of in its own environment. In He's got a point, absolutely. The cars take a different shape. You yeah. know, there's a certain brand of cars where the, the, uh, the press shots just don't do the cars justice. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a little bit true for our car as well, because you really have to see it to, be, to embrace the volume and the, and the, uh, the sections, the bodywork. But uh, we think we might win a couple of people over our photos as well. <laughs> So have you driven it yet? No, actually, no? Uh, we're in the development process at the moment. Uh, you know, and then you know, typically that's that sort of activity trickles down eventually to guys like me in design. But uh, the initial stages of driving the car are reserved for uh, the professional drivers and for for some high level input. And we just started, and it's a little bit wet and cold and snowy outside. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> more to come in the future. And color-wise, um, are you still playing with the color palette for the car? Oh, absolutely. This car is something that we're going to be looking at in a variety of colors. In fact, it's uh, it's interesting to us to play with stripes and colors and uh, just try out many, many different combinations. Now, we talked about this earlier, but there's no gurney bump, right? You didn't go with that? No, no, no gurney bump. Uh, that's a very cool thing from uh, from back in the day. I'm not so sure if the safety uh, stewards... This is tall. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not so sure if the safety, safety stewards of a uh, first street car would be appreciating someone's head being higher than the bodywork. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be so. <laughs> might not be so good if, yeah. uh, if, 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 if yeah. terrible things actually happened. Good for winning races on the fly, but that's <laughs> good for production vehicles. Good but for winning could've... races in the 60s, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you could have incorporated you know, a little bit of that in design, I guess. Um, it didn't have a home. It would hmm. just be a gimmick to, to, to uh, basically pay homage to a pretty iconic feature of the car. But it really didn't need to be there. And that's, that's actually, um, it's an interesting way to segue into the fact that everything on his car is necessary. We didn't do anything frivolous. We didn't add something just because it looks cool. We didn't, we didn't uh, force any, any feature on the car due to styling alone. And uh, you know, the gurney would have been one of those because you couldn't justify its existence. And it, yes, it would, it would have posed a penalty because that little bump still does add to the frontal area. And that's not the point of this car. It's about efficiency and innovation through performance, not necessarily like a designer's wet dream of just coming in and doing what you'd like to do. Our viewers are going to want to know the numbers, but you haven't released those, right? You haven't released pricing, you haven't released horsepower. Soon enough, we'll release all of that. So, so horsepower is over 600. That. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just want to let them know that I'm not, I'm not forgetting about no, it. No, you absolutely didn't forget about it. In <laughs> fact, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that's on quite a few people's minds. Um, you know, the Ford press kit does offer some insights as to what the uh, competitive set for the vehicle is. And we do definitely know, and we do mention that the horsepower is going to be over 600 from our 3.5 liter. How about production numbers? Is it going to be the same uh, as the last run or less? That's it's going to be, it's, a, it's an exclusive offering yeah. and the, the details will be coming out shortly in, a, in, in future events with Ford. See, I tried guys, I really did. <laughs> you sure did, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, the other question I guess I want to ask is, how much influence did the fact that this is a six cylinder uh, have on the design of the car? You know, it, uh, it allows us to shrink the, uh, the bodywork around the engine. It's mm. a tight it's a little, little engine. Yeah. So, you know, if you look at the fuselage on the car, the main body shape, and if you look at it, especially in the plan view, you'll recognize that it hugs what it needs to, just barely. So it hugs the cabin, and right behind it, it hugs the engine. And as it tapers back towards the uh, tailpipes, it's hugging the transmission, and then ultimately uh, the tailpipes coming out. So it allowed us actually to have the, the, the crazy shapes that we have in the back of the car. Uh, the EcoBoost engine's tiny. It's, it's really small by comparison, and it allowed for an aerodynamic advantage. Now, if I remember correctly from Detroit, uh, the car doesn't have a seat that recline, right? reclines, right? It's, it's, it's a set seat that moves within the carbon fiber tub. The seat does not move. It's That's, a oh, the fixed seat does seat. not move. Yep. The, 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 the uh, pedals and the pedals steering wheel come right. to you and they yeah. greet you as, as they should based on how you've set them up. 
So, so will somebody my size and height fit into Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. We'd like to sell this a, a few times over. So yeah, <laughs> and well, we that's going to be an ergonomic we, challenge, right? When you don't. It is, but you know, I mean, the that's the point. The is uh, we recognized early on that people come in, in a variety of heights, so we wanted to make sure we accommodate as much as many as possible. Yeah. I, I guess the other thing, you know, the other rub against supercars is that, that they're hard to have as an everyday car, right? I mean, this is obviously not going to be an everyday car, but at the same time, you want something that you can, you know, get in, start, and just just drive. Well, modern technology, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're 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 a little bit there anyway, just yeah. because of how the industry is going and the opportunities offered to us by modern technology. So, a lot of supercars today, you don't drive them because you don't want to, not because it's such a cumbersome activity. Uh, I don't hard to get in out of. This is true. Um, our car is actually pretty cool in that respect because, as crazy and as wild as it is. A portion of the door, when you open it, allows you to step into the car before you have to get in the car. So you have to so, put your butt in first and then... <laughs> uh, I mean, that's a preference at, yeah. the, at the end of the day, but um, it's uh, it's certainly easier to climb over than some of its competitors, no question. And how about, um, I have a friend who has a GT actually, and he said the very first uh, time he drove it, he scared himself because the previous generation, the tires, you had to get them warm, right? You had to get some temperature into them, otherwise it would just... It'd be like a go down ice. So does this have all the modern safety features? Are you looking at stability control, traction control? Yeah, it'll have a host of uh, features to enable the driver to get the most out of the car. And uh, it's just par for course these days with, with, with respect to what's again available and possible through technology. But it's also an enthusiast car 100%. Quite a few of those, uh, those features, I assume, and I expect will be completely up to the driver to disable. And the great thing about the uh, previous GT was that it was one of the great analog supercars. So you had to pay up, you know, you, 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 you wrote the check, you needed to know how to cash it. So it was pretty cool that the car actually... That spirit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a, a part of the car, DNA. Basically. It's the part of the DNA of yeah. the car is that it needs to be honest and, and, uh, and, and if it delivers on the performance in an honest manner, it's, uh, we, we, we feel we've done our job. So what are you looking forward to the most in the next year? Actually, when it gets up, when you start hitting the dealerships, I mean, at what, po what it gets, point? It's exciting from uh, from day one till yeah. till day last. You know, yeah. it's a it's a journey. We love being a part of it. It's it's going to be great to just navigate through the uh, the remaining phases of the program, making it production ready and going through all the testing and the challenges and any adjustments that we might need to make. But we've done a pretty decent job of. Uh, really doing our homework so what you're looking at here is the production car it's not a uh, it's not what we'd like for the production car to look like it's not we hope to be able to bring this to the public it is going to be this couple of minor adjustments here and there you know lights where the regulations require it mirror sizes might change a tiny bit just because of again regulations but you're looking at the car so here's the crazy thing right four doesn't build supercars for the most part right you don't build Lamborghinis you don't build Ferraris you don't build that kind of level of car or hypercars. Yet I can see the day when this car is going to go head to head with like a Porsche 918 or cars of that caliber. Will this car hold its own when you put it this, up against this those car? Kind of should hold its own now. Hypercars. We can't speculate on performance on how it'll, right. how it'll uh, perform against the landscape that it's going to go up against. But uh, we didn't do this to come in last. We also aren't going to. So you're saying Ford builds supercars? <laughs> This is the spirit of innovation at Ford. We are, uh, we're committed to delivering tried, performance. Really we're committed to delivering the performance <laughs> of the car. And, uh, and that's, that's basically what we're striving to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I beautiful appreciate car, it. Uh, appreciate beautiful that. Beautiful car. You know, it's very rarely that, that, that a car takes your breath away. And you can just that's, tell by the number of people that That's are, very that are nice to, to, yeah. to hear. I will definitely make sure the rest of the team is well aware of that. Thank you. Thank you.